Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video should be the last on the Project E60 before it's ready to be sold. We'll finish up by completing some maintenance to make it run smoother, installing some multimedia options to upgrade its features, and finally giving the rest of the car a nice detail. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. We're going to replace the spark plugs. We're gonna pull the fuel injectors off and clean those, and then also clean the mass airflow sensor. So first we need to remove all of these covers. Then we'll remove the ignition coils. It's just a clip for the connector and then you twist and pull to pull the coils out. To remove the rear coil, you'll need to unbolt these AC lines and push them out of the way. Now I'll pull the spark plugs. It's very oily. All right, well, we are going to stick our bore scope down in the spark plug hole and see how oily it is. So let's do that. Down. There's a good view of it. There it is. And then the seal should be right at the edge, right there. See the oil leaking down the side of the wall. So we'll clean it up, throw the new spark plugs in, and we'll go from there. Just gonna stick a rag down in there. Now we're gonna go in with some new Bosch Platinum. It had NGKs, but I think the Bosch are the OEM ones. Good. Now let's go back in with the coils. I'm just gonna clean the inside of the coil up a little bit where it connects to the spark plug. I'm just gonna use one of these little pipe cleaners, a little bit of electrical cleaner. I'll blow it out with some air. Now I'll put a little bit of this grease down in the boot. I'll just use the screwdriver to grab some of it. And then I'll just put it down in there. And then plug the connector back in. Snap the latch down. There's the spark plug hole right there. Put the coil down in there. You just push it down in until it kind of snaps over the spark plug. Okay, that one's in. Uh, just put the connector on it. There it is. And clip it down. That's it. Okay, now we'll put the AC lines back where they go. And this side is done. Alright, now let's move to the other side. 
To remove the rear coil on this side, you'll need to unbolt this battery cable from the firewall and move it out of the way. On my car, the nut has already been removed, so someone has probably already done this. There it comes. Oh, not too bad. Oh, got it. There it is. Looks like you gotta just drop the plug in first. Putting that little bit of grease down in the boot actually makes them snap together a lot easier. Now we're going to clean the injectors, which are down in here. So first we need to remove all of this, this connection box, just to get it out of the way. Then we can pull the injectors out. I don't have one of these types of tools where you can stick these little bits into, but a quarter inch ratcheting wrench works pretty good. To be able to remove this, there's a couple of connections we need to remove. I've already done a few of them. One of them is back here. It just pops straight out. Any of these connectors that are connected to these wire looms need to come off so we can move this out of the way. So just follow these where they go. So this connector here is way back down here behind the last coil so trying to see i don't know how you're supposed to get this out of the way so i'm going to try it like this because this is a little bit easier to hold on to than just the small little bit There it is. Ah, got it. And there goes the bolt. Got it. Okay, now that we've got the fuel rail disconnected, the two screws, we can pull up and pull the injectors out. Just wiggle back and forth a little bit. There it is. Mm. All right, so now the fuel rail is free. Let's unclip the injectors. Try not to lose these little clips. Perfect. Here we go. All right, I wanted to move the camera to show you a little bit better from the side. So I've already removed the injector here off of this rail. That is this connector here. And then we've got this injector down here, which I've just packed these rags around to catch the fuel. So this injector goes to this connector and you just want to wiggle the injector back and forth and twist it a little bit and pull out. So there it comes. I've got like this clip remover. If you put it up under the metal lip a little, you can kind of 
pry down just a little bit there. See, now it's coming out. And then catch all the fuel with this rag. There we go. Now we're gonna clean the injectors. I did number all of these just so I can keep track of how each one is performing. I'm gonna be using alcohol as I don't have anything else. And on the website of Altool, who makes this cleaner, they say that you can use above 75% alcohol. So we're just getting this thing set up. I'm using a little bit of grease on these O-rings. Each injector is gonna fit into a different adapter. The machine comes with a lot of different adapters, some adapter connectors for the injectors themselves. First, we'll be using the ultrasonic cleaner in the back. You wanna fill it just enough to where the tip of the injector sits into the fluid. All right, so we've got the injectors in the fluid in the back. We do have to plug them in. There's only four, so we'll do four at a time. Those four are plugged in. Let's turn it on on the side over here. Let's turn on the heater and the cleaner. So it's on the ultrasonic cleaning function. We've got the pulse width here and the timer there. So we'll let those finish up. I'll do the other four and then we'll come back when we put them in the front to test them. So we'll do one, two, three, and four. Two, three, four. Let's put this on. Now we'll plug them all in. Now we're going to do an idle speed test. So we'll go down to two, pulse width, time. Let's go up to two minutes and let's push the start button. And they're off. Nothing's leaking, that's good. Spray patterns all look really nice. All right, pretty much all the same across the board. All right, we got five, six, seven, and eight in here now. A little bit different perspective, so maybe you can see the spray pattern a little bit better. Let's go up to the high speed. Just crank it up right away. Wow, look at that. Quite a bit of difference in these ones. Now I'm gonna change some of the O-rings. I've only got enough to do the one that's on the bottom, but the ones on the top still feel really, really soft and good. The ones on the bottom were a little bit harder just because the heat of the engine is closer to this one. So I'm just gonna change all the ones on the bottom. And we'll just clean up where the O-ring sits. All right, now we'll pop the new ones on. Just gonna use a little bit of that dielectric grease, just a little bit of grease to lube them up. All nice and greasy. All right, now let's put these back in the car. Just 
wiggle them back and forth and push it down in there. All right, they're all pretty seated down in their holes. Now let's plug in the electrical connectors. All right, now we'll put the rail back down on top of them. And just slowly work that down. Okay, that feels pretty good. All right, now let's get each injector clip put back on. So you just want to make sure you get this clip clipped all the way on there. So if it looks a little bit like that, that's not all the way on. And you need to push it to get it to snap in there like that. Just like that. Now that's all the way clipped on. Okay, the two torques going back on. Going back in with this. Okay, now let's make sure we got all of our connectors plugged back in. Okay, this one goes. This one goes there, this one goes here. back all right this side is done so let's get this back on here now we'll remove the mass airflow sensor to clean it okay now I'm gonna be cleaning the mass airflow sensor with the CRC mass airflow sensor cleaner just gonna spray it on all sides. Just spray it all around where all the sensors are. And then you just need to let this thing completely dry. Now we'll put the mass airflow sensor back. Make sure it's going in the proper direction. There's always an arrow on these. All right, let's plug the mass airflow back in before we forget that. Now let's turn the key over, let the fuel system prime a few times, and then we'll try and start it. So I accidentally didn't plug in, I believe this is the throttle control. So that was not plugged in. So now let's try and start it again. I also didn't connect one of the cam sensors on the driver's side in the back of the valve cover. Once I got that one connected, it started to run properly. All right, so next we're gonna be installing a couple of electrical components inside the car. We've got an aux cable, which is going to integrate into the car's harness and allow me to hook up the CarPlay system through an aux cable instead of over the radio. We've got a USB extension with a little port that I'm going to be installing into the center console from the CarPlay box, which is mounted deep up under the dash. So this will allow easy access to hook into the CarPlay system. An aftermarket GPS antenna because this car originally did not have navigation, so it doesn't have a GPS antenna. So this is just an aftermarket antenna that I will plug into the back of the head unit. And then a backup camera. So I'll be mounting this on the license plate 
have to run the wires all the way from the camera to the front of the car and then tap into the reverse light to trigger the camera to turn on. All right, so first I need to take apart this dash to gain access to the head unit and I believe the CarPlay is up under the steering column. So let's pull the dash apart. So here's the, the aux cable. I think it just plugs right in to this harness. This whole thing gets to leave because this was the FM transmitter. We don't need that anymore. We've got an aux cable. All right, so I'm gonna be drilling a hole right in the center console here for the USB port. So I'll drill the hole here and then I'll run the cable through the console and then down over to the CarPlay unit, which is up under the steering column. All right, so the hole is right there. I just gotta clean it up, make it nice and round, and I'll pop that USB port in there. So now I need to run this GPS antenna. I'm gonna be mounting this right here with some 3M tape, and then I'm just gonna run the wire back Behind the dash, I'll just tuck it down there with, you know, some of these and then just tuck it all the way around. It's a really small wire, so let's do that. But I want to wipe it with some alcohol first. Nice. All right, I've got the wire fed all the way around. Now it's under the dash. Got it. There it is. The GPS antenna cable is ran. The USB cable in the center console is ran. And the auxiliary cable that's going to allow us to use the Apple CarPlay over auxiliary instead of FM transmitted is also ran. So now we need to do the backup camera. All right, so I'm back here at the back of the car. I'm going to be mounting this reverse camera right up under here like this and the license plate bracket is here and I want to run the wires behind the license plate bracket so I'm gonna be drilling a hole right here just do a little center punch I need to switch to this type of drill bit because there's another piece of metal back there that as this one goes deeper, it's starting to hit. So I'm gonna switch to this drill bit. Wipe it with some alcohol. Gonna hit it with a little bit of primer on that bare metal. A little Q tip. All right, it's been a couple of minutes. 
I've got the wires fed through the grommet. So now let's get the wires fed through here. Very nice. All right, so here are the wires out of the trunk on this side. And then here it is on that side. All right, so now I need to run the wire that goes from the Apple CarPlay unit all the way to the back. I'm gonna be running it where these wires run, which is through this hinge, comes out underneath the back dash, through the seat, down the sill plate in the back, through the B-pillar trim piece on the bottom, through the front, sill plate and then up under the dash and across okay so i got the camera wire here runs through the dash back in there comes out down on this side i'm gonna run it up and under that panel and then down the kick panel there and then back across the door sill plate all right, I just zip tied it along this harness here that goes back up into the trunk. So it just goes right through there. So I decided instead of trying to go through this, I tried to put a snake through there a couple of times. I'm just gonna zip tie it to the outside as neat as I can. So now I'm just going to continue running it along this wire here, which, like I said, this whole thing gets covered. So look at that. We don't have much left. Okay, so I thought I was going to be able to use a wire off of the Apple CarPlay unit to send a signal to turn the camera on, but it looks like I'm not. So I need to tap into the reverse light. So when I go into reverse, it turns the camera on. So I've basically got to run another wire along this same path over to the tail light. Okay, so it came with one of these style connectors so I can tap right into the harness. So we need the yellow with the white stripe, which is this one right here. Okay, hopefully that made a good connection. All right, now let me get, that looks like an eight millimeter to pull that ground nut off. Okay, so the camera is basically like right about here and the wiring comes out right here, runs along here zip tied to that harness comes down here i didn't put it through the hinge but i did just wrap it on the back side so you can't really see it from the front side you just see a couple of zip ties one of the wires goes front and then the trigger wire for the reverse follows this harness here and then is tied in to the reverse light right there and then there's a ground right there all right let's get this trunk liner put back in Okay, so I've got the USB installed in the center console. I've got the backup camera also all run and installed 
and I did the auxiliary cable install, but the software or programming is not working. I haven't figured that out yet. We'll plug my iPhone cable into the USB port that I put here in the center console. Then to get into the CarPlay, you push the menu button and hold it down for three seconds. And there we go. So now we are in CarPlay. So CarPlay is working. And now I will go into reverse. And there is the reverse camera. Back into CarPlay. And to get out of it, you just hold down the menu button again. And then you're back into regular BMW system. So when you program the system correctly after you install the auxiliary cable, right next to CD, there will be an aux option. So still working on that. Okay, now we're gonna clean the interior. I'll start by removing the front seats. Woo, dirty. Here's the main electrical connector right here in front. You got the wire coming up here. Splits off into two. Got two connectors right there. Okay, on these seats, the seat belt is bolted to the seat. So there's a trim piece here we need to remove and then unbolt the seat belt. Ooh, this carpet is just deteriorating. So first we need to remove all the little trim pieces. Two T50s. So here's the trim piece that you have to take off to get to the seatbelt bolt. And it's pretty much just a few little clips like this. Oh, that one's broken, which I probably broke. A couple clips here, and then this one here that you have to lift off. So all these clips and that one. All right, let's get a look at this interior now that the seats are out. Carpet doesn't look too bad. I don't see any gum or any crayons melted into it. So not too bad. All right, now we're gonna clean the seats and the floor mats, so we'll vacuum everything first, and then we'll clean these up with some leather cleaner and conditioner.
Okay, see how faded this is. You use a torch, you melt the top layer of the plastic, and it looks like new again. There it is. Look at that one. Since that one sits inside, it's like perfect. But these are not. So let's do these two. Okay, good. Got the wheels pulled off because I'm gonna be giving them a deep clean. You can see a ton of brake dust on the inside barrels of these things. And also on the outside, you've got some water spots here, lots of brake dust. So I pulled them off, gonna be doing a deep clean. I've got a couple of different cleaners here, some by Meguiar's, Motul, Moto Wash. This stuff's really good. And then just some industrial degreaser. Let's see how clean these things can get. Just gonna do a quick wipe down of the engine bay and the hood. So let's vacuum this first and then we'll wipe the hood down.
All right, we're gonna go for a little test drive here. Check engine lights, no airbag lights, no ABS lights. All the lights are off. Alignments straight. Yeah, there's some pretty big bumps up here, so really testing out the suspension. It feels really tight. There's no clunks. overall really solid car everything feels really tight and smooth and quiet acceleration's great braking's great steering's good suspension feels solid so this thing's ready i think we'll end it there nice little test drive video i would do a pull right here but i'm almost out of gas so See you guys later. All right, everyone. That's gonna do it for today's video and this build series. The 2004 545i is now ready to be sold, so we'll be moving on to the next project. Look out for that video later this week showing what that project is. So thank you all for watching, and if you haven't already, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification button, and I'll see you all in the next video.